in the Bible for us to read. None of the scriptures there are just for us to read. But they are words for children of God to live by all the time, not just in difficult circumstances. I sent this to my granddaughter and I, to my daughter as well, and it, it fits all of us. But uh, I told them this, and, and I don't say this boastfully in any way, but I told them this. I said, Papa and Dad, uh, is not very smart. Now, if I ever heard an amen, y'all could all amen right there and know that I'm not very smart. But I have learned some things, as Peggy can attest to, and Brother Jack, Gary can attest to, because of the many years and experiences that we've had with the Lord. We have learned that uh, anyone who will listen to wisdom, uh, whether it's through experiences, whether it's through age or not, wisdom don't come just uh, just because you get older. Uh, Brother Mullins always said that. You can get old without being wise. Uh, it's going to come if you keep breathing. But there are some things that we have learned in our lifetime. If we'll just, and I say this in particular to our younger generations, if we'll just listen to wisdom, that comes from God, not man, then we can find that peace and that comfort in life that the world, you heard me say this so many times, but we find things in our relationship with the Lord that the world just doesn't know. So when I thought about talking about prayer tonight, and this, this uh, devotional came up, then I want to share this with you. And it's taken from Matthew chapter five, uh, chapter six, verses five through eight, and uh, you know the verses of scripture very well, but let me just uh, uh, share what the Lord is talking about, and you're familiar with the, what the Lord was talking about in that Sermon on the Mount, when he's talking about praying, about prayer. And the thing he said, he says, when you pray, don't pray like the hypocrites. When you pray, don't pretend piety by praying publicly on street corners. When you're praying, you're not praying to be heard of man, but to talk to God. And that's what prayer is, is simply talking with God. With regard to consistency or how to approach him, Sometimes we struggle in prayer. Do you ever st struggle in prayer? Probably so. You know, when I set aside a time and to, just to talk with the Lord and, and to share with him my heart, he already knows my heart. He already knows what's in my heart and what I'm going to ask for or what I'm going to share with him. But uh, sometimes in talking to the Lord, uh, things start coming into my mind. You know, the devil wants to interrupt. Anytime that you're going to have a conversation with God, are you going to have sit down and have a Bible study to talk to the Lord and, and to share his word? And remember, when you're reading the Bible, that's, that's God speaking to you and you need to listen. But when you do that, sometimes devil devil just jumps in there and he'll put things into your heart and your mind to try to distract you from what you're trying to do and talking with your heavenly father. So sometimes you find yourself struggling in prayer, but especially if we're trying to pray like we want men to hear what we're saying. Uh, there's a right way to pray and there's a wrong way. And so he addresses this in this, in this particular text. Uh, if man prays just to be heard of man, then that's all the reward he's going to get. Oh, look at me, I'm praying and, and I'm, a, I'm a religious creature because I'm talking to God. Well, prayers like that are not gonna to get to God. And that's what he addresses in this particular devotional today. 
there's a right way to pray. It's not like how people felt when they was watching the Pharisees. Uh, they corrupted that privilege, that priceless privilege that they had and that we have in talking to our Heavenly Father. Just, just to think that we have the privilege and the opportunity to talk to God, who is our Heavenly Father. That, as he says in this uh, particular devotional, this is something that should humble us. So when we pray, there's four things that he mentions here. Number one is sincerity. Be sincere in your prayers. Coming before a holy God, bowing in his presence. In the book of uh, Hebrews, we have that invitation to come into the throne room and talk to the heavenly father. What a privilege, what a blessing that God has afforded us as his children to talk to him, our Heavenly Father. I always enjoyed, sometimes I didn't enjoy, sometimes I endured talks with my earthly father because sometimes he had a lot of correction uh, to share with me and sometimes pretty stern. I did find out that whenever he spoke, I better listen because he didn't want to have to repeat it. And you know, that's the way God is in his, is in his word. Whatever he says, if he says it one time, that's sufficient. We ought to listen. We ought to be humbled because we have the privilege to come and to talk to our heavenly father. Amen. Rather than just a self-focused desire to be perceived that we pray favorably, that people may hear. No, we're praying in sincerity because we're seeking God. Now, there's a second thing in, in, in prayer, and that is this, to pray in secret. You know what the Lord said in the book of Matthew chapter five, when he talks about going into to your closet to pray, uh, although there's always a, maybe a place, a uh, humble, place and even for a humble public prayer we also need to have that personal place that personal time alone with our heavenly father and that's the reason why he mentions this closet praying just shut everything else out i remember dr charles stanley talking about uh, even going into his own closet when he just really want to get sincere with God. Just go in a closet and shut the door and sit down and you can't see anybody, you can't hear anybody. All you It's just you and God. And folks, what a blessed privilege that is. Just to be able to be in a closet, just to be in a sacred place, separate place, personal place that we can daily have time alone with our Heavenly Father. And then the third thing that he mentions, and all these start with an S, uh, I don't know if that has any significance or not, but to pray sincerely and to pray a simple prayer in secret, is, it, next one is to pray a simple prayer. You remember he mentions in there about how that the pagans prayed. And they prayed with meaningless repetition and the words that they would say or phrases such as to maybe to get their God's attention and persuade them to grant their request. Well, we only have one God and we only have one heavenly father. And since we know that the Lord always hears his children, we can plainly present our concerns and our petitions to him, not just in a in an emergency situation, not, not just when the circumstances of life are beyond our control, but every moment, every breath that we take, we have reason to give thanks to God humbly because of his love and his concern, his care for us. Just simply talking with God. That's what prayer is all about. Just simply talking with God the way I'm talking with you and the way you talk with each other. And then the last one that he mentions was serenity. Our Heavenly Father loves us. He knows us, he knows all about us. 
He knows what we need before we ever ask. He knows our hearts. He knows our heart's desire. And we don't have to worry that he's going to ignore his children's prayers. I know when I talked to my earthly father, he would always listen. Very, very good about listening to what I had to say. What I had to say might not always been very smart. Of course, you know, things hadn't changed. I was still not very smart, but he listened and he could hear my heart as I spoke to him. If I spoke to him in sincerity, he knew when I was sincere and he knew when I wasn't. Well, the Lord, our heavenly father, even above all that, knows our heart and he knows our needs and he's not going to ignore his children. When we humbly come before him with forgiveness of sin, we're not going to talk to our heavenly father when we have a sin in our life that we're kind of hiding or think, well, well, I don't need to confess this. Sometimes it's a sin of, of self worth. And we think we're a little better than we really are. We think we really know more than we really know. You see, there's some sin sometimes that we don't recognize, but when we come to talk to our heavenly father, we need to recognize that <clears throat> whatever's within us, as the psalmist said, search me, O God, know my heart. See if there's any wicked way in my life. Reveal it to me and then confess it so that we might have a sincere, true conversation, communication time with our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father is not going to ignore his children. So our responsibility is to, to, uh, to follow his guidelines. We must see ourselves as weak individuals. We must see ourselves as dependent children. We are totally dependent upon our Heavenly Father. And in these things, in sincerity and secret, in simplicity, serenity, we come to Him as our loving Heavenly Father to provide the help that we need and the strength that we have. Daily prayer, important. Daily prayer. Continuous praying. The Lord says to pray without ceasing. Don't mean we have to go about mumbling words to our Heavenly Father. He hears our heart. He knows our mind. We talk to him daily in that sacred place, that individual place, communicating with him, consistently addressing him in our wants and our needs, Listen to me on this, and especially in praise. We have everything under the sun to praise the Lord for. Our Father, which art in heaven, what did he say? Hallowed be thy name. Honor thy name. We're honoring God when we have a daily place that we share with him when we communicate with him, our heavenly father wants to hear from his children. Well, that's all I'm going to share with you tonight, but I wanted to just share those things because prayer is so important. We're all in circumstances that are beyond our control, uh, beyond what we can do. I was just watching the news a little bit a little while ago, and it's, it, it, it's a pathetic situation. And y'all know this, that our world is in today. Uh, conditions and the lack of control in so many different areas. But one thing we can be for certain of and sure about is this, God is in control and he's never been out of control. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful, Lord, for your love and your mercy to us. So grateful, Lord, for the privilege that we have to come into your throne room and to share our hearts even though oh, you know our needs and our hearts before we ever share or say a word, we know that you know us. You love us. So Lord, help us to love you. and Help us to faithfully communicate with you through our daily prayers and times of need. Help us to praise you for your goodness and for your mercy to us. Bless these who have shared in this service tonight. And I pray, Lord, that 
you would bless each one of them with health and strength and comfort and peace that only you can provide. And we'll give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen.